The following is an analysis and includes interpretation by the author. On November 6th, we are faced with the choice between advancing into the future or stagnating in the past. We must make a decisive choice. On the one hand, there is Walter Mondale, a candidate who faces the economic facts, who works to help those less fortunate in society, who is concerned about our environment, and who is committed to both a strong defense and a reduction in nuclear arms. And then there is Ronald Reagan, who, after running for office on promises to balance the budget, has given us the largest deficit in the history of the nation. And then, when his own economic advisors tell him that he must raise taxes to remove this menace to our future, he denies reality by telling Americans that he has no plan to increase taxes. His administration has trod upon those least fortunate in our society, cutting social services and trying to eliminate Pell Grants for student loans, thus making universities even more financially inaccessible. He has attempted to destroy environmental policies by appointing such people as James Watt and Ann Gorsuch. He has dismantled civil rights programs and has attempted to pack the Civil Rights Commission. He is the first president since the invention of atomic weapons that has failed to hold any sort of meaningful arms reduction talks. Ronald Reagan has created a temporary guise of prosperity by mortgaging our future. Don't be fooled. Vote for Walter Mondale. He'll return that future to us. Ronald Reagan is, without a doubt, the best candidate for the office of President of the United States. Mr. Reagan deserves to be elected because his policies have brought the United States to a new plateau that looks toward the future instead of dwelling on the past, that promotes economic growth and not stagnation, and that promotes an equitable solution to our nation's problems instead of expensive panaceas. Right now, because of Reaganomics, inflation is practically neutralized, around 4%, and interest rates have just been lowered again to 12%. Compare that with the Carter years, with double-digit inflation and 20% interest rates. The American people in 1980 recognized that 25 years of Democratic domination of Congress had failed miserably, and that it was time for a change, a change to smaller government and more confidence in the people of this country. We have already seen progress as a result of just four years of Republican influence. Wouldn't we be foolish to stop now? The Democrats have had their chance to recognize their vision of America, but people have seen that the Democrats' vision goes only as far as how to squeeze more money out of hard-working Americans to spend on bureaucratic, inefficient government. Reagan has given this country a confidence that it has not known since the pre-Vietnam era. Housing starts are up, the stock market is rising, even home mortgage interest rates, a vital figure for people who want to fulfill the, the American dream of owning a home, continue to fall, down to 14.05 percent, from 14.26 percent only a month ago. Sure signs that the people expect this economic surge we are on to continue. Because of Reagan's policies, the country is stronger. The Soviets have not embarked on any military ventures such as they did so shamelessly in Afghanistan during the Carter years. The administration has even moved boldly in ridding Grenada of its tyrannical Marxist regime, saving American students in the process. You wouldn't expect Mondale to act as decisively. In fact, you can't depend on Mondale for anything except higher taxes. <laughs> 